guest became a platinum-selling recording artist and made friends with Dr. Fauci. Her hugely successful debut album, Sour, is out now. Please welcome Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, I imagine you get screaming a lot when people <laughs> see you. Oh, it's so nice to see everyone. <laughs> Does anyone call you O-Rod? Has anybody, um... You know what? I feel like that's a little bit of a missed opportunity. There's only one person who does it. It's my, like, like your tech whenever I perform. Um, he writes, like, O-Rod on my mic pack. So that's the only one. But maybe you should start a trend. I, I think I have a feeling it'll just kind of have a life of its own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, boy, you have had some year, huh? I mean... Uh, they, I mentioned that you met Dr. Fauci, mm -hmm. you went to the White House. They called and invited you to the White House. Yeah, just so crazy. Did they... <laughs> and that, did they know that you wanted to encourage people, to young people specifically, to get vaccinated? <laughs> and is that why they reached out? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it was such an honor to go, and especially to support such an important cause that I feel yeah. so passionately about. So that was amazing. And um, everyone was just so kind, got to meet... Biden and Fauci, and yeah, the White House is just the coolest place. I was so nervous to go. <laughs> but I like walked in there, and there's like all these plates that like George Washington used to eat his dinner on, and like all of this crazy stuff. And I was just like, scared I was gonna like sneeze and break such a priceless artifact. It was, it was crazy, but I uh, walked out, didn't break anything. Yeah, a lot of people Thank your God. age are, are still in high school learning <laughs> about George Washington's dinner plates, and you were there actually. <laughs> Experiencing them, yeah, yeah. That's pretty, I think we have a photograph. Uh, now, the, the, with the, with the, um, with the Ray-Bans, do you bring those or does he hand them out? He, he gave them to me, actually. He gave me he gave a few me. gifts. He gave me those, he gave me some M&Ms, and he also gave me a shoehorn, which was strange. Did had he like, really like give the, you a shoehorn? Really, it had like the presidential what? like emblem on it. I'm serious, it's in my house. Well, if you ever thought Joe Biden was too old to be president, <laughs> now we know he is. He's giving out shoehorns. <laughs> He's giving out shoehorns. I know, among some other stuff. <laughs> Did you pretend cool. to be interested in the shoehorn? I didn't see it when he gave it to me. It was like in a bag and I like opened it up. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I was I was listening to your album on Spotify today, and I was looking at a couple of the songs are over a billion. I actually had to like I had to add it up because I've not seen that many digits before, <laughs> and obviously that's got to be overwhelming. That people have listened to your song just on Spotify alone over a billion yeah. times. Yeah, that is that's a lot. Yeah. I think my wife is accounted for about half of the, those billion. <laughs> Time. Do you, um, are you a happy person in general? <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy. Because um, you seem upset in the album. <laughs> uh, I think you can be a happy person and still be upset sometimes. Yes, and that's true. I think, like, songwriting is a great medium to express emotions like that that, you know, aren't really fun to, like, talk about. You know, it's kind of this nice, like, therapeutic way to talk about feelings that are uncomfortable, so that's probably where that came from. <laughs> How'd you figure that out at such a young age that you could write that stuff down and make something beautiful out of it because I mean like when I was your age if they're like I had a well I didn't have a breakup because I didn't have a girlfriend but <laughs> in, in the in the outlandish scenario that I did have one um and there was a breakup I don't think you know I certainly would have written a song maybe I'd crank call her house like every night for a week mm -hmm. that would have been my reaction to it <laughs> completely valid no I um <laughs> I've always been doing it. I, I, I've been writing songs since I could literally talk. Like, my mom has home videos of me just making up gibberish songs about, like, going to the grocery store and stuff like that when I was so young. But um, when I was nine years old, I learned how to play the piano and, like, sort of starting, uh, started writing, like, more proper songs. Like the What's first... the first song? Do you remember the first one that you wrote that you really thought of as a song? The one that comes to mind is a song called Superman. Um, I wrote it when I was, like, nine or ten, and it says, like... I don't need no Superman to come and save me, to come and teach me lessons, because I'm a human being and I can clean up my own message, which I thought was, like, very profound. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know, I was, I was feeling empowered you that day. You thought it was profound from a nine-year-old. I would be like, <laughs> we got to get, this is Doogie Howser we have here. I mean, to have thoughts like that at nine years old is just unbelievable. Uh, Did you get along with other nine-year-olds? Or were you <laughs> like, oh, these children, I can't relate to them anymore? <laughs> 
No, not at all. I, I had a lot of friends growing up. Very lucky. Do you, um, now when you like might have a, a, a date or a, a boy that you're interested in or something like that, are they nervous? Ah, oh, they should be. They yeah. should be, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> No, no. I don't and, know. <laughs> and what a great position to be in, because you go like, hey, you know what? If this goes wrong, and obviously most young relationships do, <laughs> I can get a couple songs out of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I would be, win. oh boy, would I be on my best behavior? <laughs> <laughs> because you don't want to end up immortalized. In fact, you have um, uh, somebody who actually, you know, kind of created a similar path for herself. You're on the cover of Rolling Stone uh, this <laughs> month. Alanis Morissette. And she wrote one of the most searing breakup songs of all time. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one of your role models? Yeah, definitely. Um, I look up to her so much, and I just think she's the coolest person and the most amazing songwriter. And it was such an honor to meet her. Um, she gave me dating advice, too, which I think is so cool to she get did. dating advice from Alanis Morissette. Like, that's pretty iconic. So, did, uh, uh, yeah, I ironic, iconic. Yeah. yeah um, um, <laughs> Did, is she the person who inspired you to curse in your song? <laughs> you know what? Maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. Does your mom get upset when you curse in your song? She does. She, she definitely does, yeah. does. But my mom's actually really funny, though. My mom is like a third grade teacher from the Midwest, and she's very sweet. But like her favorite music is like death metal and like punk music. Is and, it like, really? Yeah, she's like the sweetest woman, and she'll like turn on like. Well, no, she's not. She's something. not the sweetest woman. <laughs> In order to be the sweetest woman, death metal can't be on your iPod. That's true. Yeah. That's true. She has some edge to her. Wow, she does, huh? Yeah. Like, what bands does she like? Like, I remember, like, being <laughs> really young, and, like, she would wake me up, and she'd, like, put a record on. Like, that's, like, something that she would do to, like, wake me up for school. And she'd put on, like, a Motorhead record to, like, wake me up. And I'd, like, wake up to, like, this, like, intense, intense music. But I don't know. Maybe that, like... Helped shape me, shape me as a musician, maybe. Maybe it did, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what made you curse so much. Yeah. yeah. You, um, uh, this album's called Sour, obviously. Uh, we, um, now I wonder, will this be, um, like, a sour, will this lead to the title of your next album? Have you thought about it yet? Will it be, like, you know, people are speculating. Maybe Gosh. sweet or salt. Salty would not. Be salty, good, but, yeah. savory, umami, savory. You know, yeah, so many different things. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's my little secret. I'm still kind of working. It's a secret. On the rest of well, it. it's yeah. inspired a lot. People now will buy sticker packs <laughs> that are the Olivia Rodrigo sticker pack. I was just saying. I hope people like dress up as that for Halloween. That'd be really cool. Well, look behind you right now. We've got somebody um, dressed up as Halloween. G, G Rod over there. <laughs> And Gamma, what do you have on your tongue? <laughs> and stickers take like <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> what song are you going to do for us tonight, Olivia? Um, I'm going to perform this song uh, called Traitor. Excellent. When we return, Olivia Rodrigo with Traitor. This is her album. It's called Sour. We'll be right back. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Uh-oh. Oh. oh.